Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of Dark Power, where we talk about everything that happens on AEW Dark, Elevation, and NWA Power. Now, we've got a lot to get to this week, but before we do, let's just take a quick moment to remind you guys to hit that like button, comment, share, and subscribe if you have not already. Let's start off with Elevation. Elevation had a few good matches here. I like a lot of what they're starting to do now with including more people on Elevation from the AEW, I guess, main roster, we could call it. I, I guess yeah, the AEW has a main roster in that sense. But one of the things that stood out to me was Miro's match against Will all day. They're continuing to build him up. We saw last week on Dynamite what happened between him and Kip. I'm sure that we're going to see Kip come back and maybe as soon as... It could be as soon as, as uh, this week's Dynamite. I, w I would hope that they would keep him off TV for a little bit just to sell that wrist but then to have him make a return to confront Miro. But we are seeing Miro on this week's Dynamite. They advertise that during this match. So I'm looking forward to seeing what exactly we're going to see from Miro. And he's continuing to build this dominance. And now they're starting to... They, they were letting people just get used to this new version of Miro. And I think now they're starting to put the, the full weight of the machine behind him. Speaking of that, we are turning towards another thing that stood out to me, which was Abaddon versus Ryo Mizunami. The reason, one of the reasons why this stood out to me was Abaddon picked up the win against Ryo Mizunami. I kind of expected Ryo to get the win. Ryo seems more of someone that is important to AEW, but here Abaddon picks up the win, further uh, reinforcing who that character is that she knows so well, that she acts out so well that she portrays so well. She does a very good job of it, and she needs quality wins. And winning some, beating somebody who won that Women's Eliminator title tournament to face Sheeta, that is something that's really good and important and strong for Abaddon to have in her belt or under her belt as she continues to chase after more success in the women's division. I don't know if she's necessarily going to be somebody who gets a shot against Sheeta anytime soon, but... If it's to build her up to kind of help her put someone over who is a face, who will be able to challenge Britt down the road for that title, then I'm all for it. Speaking of people, speaking of, you know, main roster appearances from the AEW main roster, we have two big appearances here tonight. We have John Moxley being on Elevation and we have FTR being on Elevation. Two very strong matches here to just get over more, I guess. It's not often that you need them to be successful on matches on Elevation, but in a way, it's more about getting Elevation over. That's what the, their, their appearance is here for, and I like it. I just wish that they would promo more of it. I feel like I didn't know that Moxley and FTR would be on Elevation, and I guess... I guess putting it up on Instagram or tweeting about it is one thing, but especially because these matches are pre-taped and they know what they're planning on doing and having on certain episodes of Dark or on Elevation, I would talk about it during Dynamite. I would have, you know, yeah, they, they flash up what are the results, what are the match results for that week's Elevation and Dark before we that happened before we get to Dynamite. But what I would do is I would talk on Dynamite about the fact that Next Monday, John Moxley is going to be on Elevation. The goal is to get people to watch. So I think that's something that they could work on, a little bit better promo work when it comes to there. And finally, what stood out to me from this show was the main event, which is Hardy and Matt Hardy and The Blade versus Colt Cabana and Five. It's kind of the, the, the Dark Order B team. But they get the job done in being good foils for Hardy and the Blade. We are continuing to build towards this Hardy family office and the Dark Order feud. I'm wondering if, because Pinnacle and Inner Circle got blood and guts, whether these guys are going to get Stadium Stampede. We haven't had the Stadium Stampede match in some time, and I think that, that's, yeah, Tony Khan said he wanted to kind of make it a, a staple of the year, make it something that we saw more than once, and I think Stadium Stampede would definitely fit this feud. So let's turn towards AEW Dark. There wasn't actually as much 
on Dark that kind of stood out to me. I liked the opener of Hobbs and Starks in a tag team match, but it was not really a tag team match because Starks just chills and Hobbs basically handles them on his own. Quick and simple and straight to the point. That's what we like when it comes to AEW Dark. But more importantly, in the case of Team Taz, it's doing more to reinforce how deadly Powerhouse Hobbs is. You don't put guy's name, you don't put Powerhouse in a guy's name and not expect him to do these kinds of things. Another thing that I liked was Paige and Scorpio versus TNT. Um, so the, the Hughes boys are Terrell and I forget the other one's name. I think Thomas. But that's all. I'm only thinking about that because it starts with T. But the the Hughes boys are Devon Dudley's kids, if you don't know. And they had a match on Elevation. They have a match now on Dark. Good good tag team. That's what it takes. It takes two to tango, as I like to say on here. And these are two guys who are good in the ring and can keep up with Paige and Scorpio Sky. They have the pedigree behind them to do so. And... Paige and Scorpio Sky had to have a really good tag match out of here, and continuing to build them up. I want to see where exactly this 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 showdown between them and Darby happens, and I would love, 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 love to see. I know it kind of goes in the face of what the title is, but I would love to see a TNT title match on Elevation. That would be a real great way to hook people in to view Elevation. And I get it, you know, TNT, Face of the Network, all that kind of stuff. We're going to have the TND title on Dynamite. That's the network. It would just be a cool change of pace. That's that's all I'd kind of be looking for for there. I liked the Dark Order six-man tag match against the... I don't know what exactly their name is. I, I, in my head, I call them the Fashion Group. It's the, 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 the Avalon, Benoni, and Ryan Nemeth, and uh, J.D. Drake. I don't know. I don't know if they have an actual name. I call them the fashion group, so that's what I'm going to say. That was a pretty good six-man tag match, and I really liked Dante Martin versus Danny Limelight. They are two very, very young guys who are going to go really far in the business. And I like that they are continuing to make sure that Dante has something to do while Darius is recovering. We saw them do that very well when it came to Max Caster of the Acclaimed while Bones was out. So... Great job altogether for these guys, and they are going to be a staple of AEW and for wrestling in the future. And if we're talking about staples of wrestling, we got to talk about NWA Power. So this week's episode of Power was not really a full-fledged episode of Power. It was more of a, it was a power surge, which means it's more of a recap of things that have happened and kind of seeing where we're going to go for the future. So they do a little recap of everything that's been going on between Thunder Rosa and Camille. And then they have Thunder Rosa at the announcer's desk for a little bit of an interview with Joe Galley and Mae Valentine. Good interview. Pretty straightforward. Rosa knows her character very well. She's got the flair for the dramatic. She knows when to make the right pauses, how to play to an audience, how to play to a camera, really well done there. And then they cut to a Genocide and Sky Blue match, which is our only match of the, of the week. Good match, so by virtue of being the only match of the week, it gets match of the night <laughs> for NWA Power. But strong work, I've seen a good bit of Sky Blue now uh, through NWA and through Mission Pro Wrestling, who we are partners with. So I'm looking forward to seeing more from Sky Blue. I think that she's I think she's been a little bit on yeah, I think she's had a match on AEW Dark. I don't, I don't think what's elevation. Yeah, I think it was dark. But either way, she's gonna be somebody who is slowly, slowly winning people over and getting more of a name for herself. Looking forward to see how they continue to build her on NWA Power. But we kinda know that with Power and the NWA, they Focus more on the old school kind of look, and that holds true even with the women. We kind of see that genocide is somebody that they're going to be maybe behind for the future. And hey, that's that's how the cookie crumbles. So good match though, and I like how both of them are able to get over with Sky Blue being the plucky underdog kind of face, and genocide being that monster powerhouse. The show kind of takes a little bit of a turn when May Valentine does a sit down interview with Trevor Murdoch. 
So Murdoch, see, this is what's kind of weird about it. So I, it's it's hard for me to get behind Murdoch as a face. I think they could have gone a different direction, and I kind of see where they could be going with it being Aaron Stevens down the road. But it just feels a little, I don't know, forced almost with Trevor Murdoch. Something about it, something about him, I can't really tell what it is. This interview did not do him any favors. It just kind of dragged to me. May Valentine asked some kind of, not weird questions, but she set him up for weird answers. I liked, see, here's the thing. I liked the part where he's talking about Harley Race. So he talks about his connection to Harley Race, and that is also his connection to Nick Aldis. They were both trained by Harley Race. I liked how he talked about what it would mean for him to win the, the title that his mentor had, had held at one point in time. I really liked how he talked about how it hurts him that he could potentially finally win the NWA World's Championship, and he would not be able to share that with Harley Race. That part, really, really fine. Everything else around it, all the stuff before and after it, kind of just dragged. I think they could have cut down a little bit of it. And also, I think that's because, I don't know, like May did not set him up properly. She didn't tee up better questions for him. Or she asked him kind of questions that were super straightforward. There wasn't much to 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 for, for him to go off of. And so it kind of just felt like, He's answering things, he's telling us things we already know, or should already know. And maybe that's the, the key thing, the key takeaway there, is that they didn't do him favors because we didn't really learn that much more about him. Even the Harley Race stuff, we already knew. So it just, some, I, I, want, I wanted to hear more about how the 30-day the suspension was, was upsetting him. They barely touched on the fact that he's suspended for it. There was more reference in him being suspended in the fact that they put down at the bottom Trevor Murdoch is suspended for 30 days than what Trevor Murdoch was saying. There wasn't a level of fire behind him in the interview that you would expect for somebody who, who lost the match not by their own fault and is now suspended for 30 days and is unable to feed their family even though he's talking about how at some points in time he had to choose between paying rent or putting gas in, in his car so he could make the next wrestling show, and he went to the, rest, the wrestling show because that's what he needed to do. So, I don't know, like something about that just felt a little off. Finally, our final segment of Power this evening is all this sitting down with Galley and Mae Valentine. They kind of do a little quick going over about how their problems with the tag champions, with Aaron Stevens and J.R. Kratos, all this tells us that he can see that there are some problems there, some cracks, and in a way he's got to take advantage of it because it's it's business. It's strictly business, right? That's what he does. And he announces that Latimer and Adonis are the number one contenders to the tag titles. This is kind of what we all saw coming. We kind of had this feeling that something was going to happen with the tag champs because Kratos and Stevens are getting to that point where they are having problems with each other. And you got to think that, in a sense, Kratos is mad ungrateful or, you know, not following through with what he should be following through with, because, after all, the only reason why he's the tag champion is because Stevens brought him in after, question mark, passed away. So, I don't know, that part, ugh. But, <laughs> you're like, Kratos, come on, what are you doing? But, we, we kind of feel that we're going to have new tag champions sooner rather than later, and if it's not L Latimer and Adonis, it's Renaro and... Tim Storm. It would feel. See, here's the thing. It would feel a little weird if Latimer and Adonis, the heels, take the titles from the conflicted team to then feud with the face team of Renaro and Tim Storm. The reason being is that Renaro and Tim Storm's problem is not with Latimer and Adonis. It's with Kratos. So there has to be something that there has to be something that would keep Kratos involved in the mix. Maybe a new partner. Maybe. He joins Strictly Business. Maybe that's where they're going to go with it. I don't know. But I want to see how exactly they, they, they spin this because there's a, lot, there's a lot of moving parts that are going on in this storyline. Finally, we find out, and all this is kind of playing this off as though he had no idea this was going to happen. What the hell is going on? He needs, to, he needs to talk to somebody. He needs to figure something out because this is starting to piss him off. But he finds out through Galley that in three weeks' time, there's going to be a 14-man battle royale for the NWA World title, the number one contendership. 
So this threw me for a moment because I said, why the hell do we need to wait three weeks? And then it hit me. That's when Trevor Murdoch's suspension is going to be up. Which goes to show that the entire purpose of that sit-down interview, which was to reinforce the fact that Trevor Murdoch is suspended for 30 days and is angry at Nick Aldis for what he has done to him, was completely missed. Because if you were watching the show, you were just like, wait a minute, oh, three... Oh, Murdoch's suspended. It takes you a moment. You're not thinking, damn, I wish Murdoch could be there. Oh, shit, he will be able to be there. You're not thinking... You, you, you're just thinking, why are they waiting three weeks? You're not thinking... Okay, wait, is Galley going to say that Murdoch has a shot when he gets back? Like, he, he can possibly get a, sh a, a title match when he gets back? You're not worried about that. You're not trying to hope that the babyface is going to be able to get a shot against the heel. You're just like, okay, three weeks seems like a long time. And then it hits you afterwards. And I think that's part of the problem. They're not... I don't know. I was talking. We were talking to, 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 to Sid about it the other day. And he said they need somebody. They need a new... Ricky Starks, and if that isn't, you know, he, he hit it on the head. It is somebody like with the charisma of Ricky Starks is sorely missed on NWA Power, and I really hope that they're able to find somebody. Maybe that's the goal. Maybe the goal is to slow burn this Aaron Stevens storyline and really get people behind him more. And Trevor Murdoch is that speed bump that we need to cross in order to get to where we need to go, which is Stevens versus Aldis again, this time with a better outcome for Stevens. But we'll see what happens. That's what we're here for, right? That's what we do here on Dark Power. We talk about everything that happens on these shows. And as we get towards those, I'll be with you every single step of the way. As a reminder, guys, hit that like button, comment, share, subscribe. Leave your comments in the in the in the in the, in the old YouTube the old YouTube thing. Love to hear from you guys. And you can always catch me on Fusion of Honor with my guy, the three-time, 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 baby-making champ, Ness, where we talk about MLW Fusion and Ring of Honor. So until next time, guys, take care of yourselves.